Remotely operating a steam locomotive is something that's very difficult to do. While it's somewhat possible to control a diesel or electric engine, steam locomotives are almost entirely mechanical, making it much harder to effectively control them from outside of the cab. The Great Western Railway, however, didn't care much for these limitations, and decided to have a go at trying to make their engines remote controlled. The Great Western's Automatic Train Control System, or ATC for short, was first devised as a way of helping drivers understand signals in adverse conditions, such as fog or heavy snow. The idea was the cab of the locomotive would be fitted with a device that would inform the driver what the signal they had passed by was set to, by making a noise and moving a coloured disc. This way, the driver would know for certain what the signal was set to, and could act accordingly. It also meant the railway could save money on hiring fogmen. As the system was being developed, it was decided it would be additionally useful if the ATC could bring an engine to a stop on its own, in the event it passed a signal set to danger and the driver hadn't noticed or was otherwise incapacitated. The system was developed at the Reading Signal Works in 1905. The design they came up with involved installing a 40 to 60 foot ramp in between the rails that was connected to a battery. Locomotives fitted with ATC devices would have a small boot fitted between its frames positioned above the track, also being attached to a battery. When the signals were set to all clear, the ramp would become charged, and when an engine equipped with an ATC passed over it, the engine's boot would make contact with the ramp and complete the circuit, causing a bell to sound in the engine's cab and indicating to the driver that the line was clear. When the signal was set to danger, however, the ramp would remain off, so when the engine's boot passed over it, it would open a valve and let air into the engine's vacuum brakes, causing them to come on. The air would also cause a small siren to sound, alerting the driver the brakes had come on. The driver would then have to use a release trigger fitted to the ATC device in order to close the vacuum brakes again and keep the train going. This not only ensured the driver would know to slow down the train when required, but also ensured that the driver was alert. In the event the driver didn't acknowledge the siren, the train would slow down and eventually come to a stop. The ramp was designed to stop engines while it was off as a means of failing safely, should the ramp's battery be damaged or otherwise disengaged. The system the system was installed and trialled on the Henley branch line in 1905, before being tried again on the single-track Fairford branch. Here the system was tried after the signals on the line were uninstalled to see if trains could still operate without them. The system worked as intended and was given the green flag to be installed on further parts of the GWR. It was decided however that conventional signals would still remain in place on lines fitted with ATCs, as not only did drivers feel uneasy travelling on lines without them, but it also meant engines that weren't equipped with ATCs could still use the lines without issue. By December of 1908, 168 ramps were installed between Paddington Station and Reading. By 1938, all of the Great Western's main lines had been fitted with ATCs, along with several important branch lines. Rather oddly, it seemed only the Great Western was interested in ATCs at the time, as the LMS, LNER, and Southern Railways didn't pursue installing them on any of their lines despite their effectiveness. It's important to note that the Great Western was by no means the first railway in Britain to develop and use ATCs, as cab signalling systems had been around since the 1860s, with the Great Central Railway and the North Eastern Railway both using designs of their own. However, these were only used in limited areas and were removed from their respective lines after the railways were grouped in 1921. Despite this, the Great Western still used ATCs on a scale unseen anywhere else across the country, and did so of their own fruition. The LMS began to trial their own system shortly after the Second World War, which ended up serving as the foundation for British Railway automatic warning system. The Great Western's ATC system stayed in place after becoming part of British Railways and remained in use well until the 1980s. All in all, the Great Western's ATCs were a very impressive feat of engineering for their time. The fact that the GWR managed to design and implement a system to safely and automatically stop trains before most other railways, and long before it was a legal requirement, never mind the fact the system was put in place on steam locomotives which are next to impossible to control remotely compared to diesel and electric engines, well, I think it makes it fair to say that the GWR may have truly been ahead of its time. Subscribe for more.